All right, people. I uh, I went with Cosmos, as you guys know. I'll be going more detail about uh, how the tournament went with my on daily duels, but I went. 4-4 four four because I'm fucking trash. My luck was terrible, but I'll go in more detail about that. But I decided to actually bring back Cosmogeddon. So, you guys remember that deck profile? Uh, this is Cosmogeddon's 2.0, or Cosmo Demise. I, was, I wanted to take Cosmo Demise, but then I was like, there's a lot of the plays that I didn't really like that were kind of too cute. So, I wanted to make sure that I get my Dark Daddy in the duel. So, I us hop into it. So, Konami, get my Dark Daddy down to 1, so... He, he couldn't work, of course. I mean, he, he's the best. 3,000 beaker. Uh, can't be targeted. That summon on pop. Like, I wouldn't even float with him. I, I'd summon, pop, they kill him. He'd go to the graveyard. I'd summon, and I'd pop him again. Like, there's no point in really floating with him. Just keep reviving him from the graveyard. So. I run two slip. Two slip was okay. Uh, I actually cut it down to the last second. I was thinking about running three to make sure I could pull off the infinity plays, the most consistent. But then I was worried about dead drawing them. So the monster count's really low in this deck because I didn't want to see any monsters just back row. And if I get the monsters, you know, I get them. You know. But uh, there are times where I really like three. It's kind of hard to keep track of the two slips when there's only two of them. It's like, well, one's in the graveyard and one's banished right now. And I have to get both plays set up, to, uh, both of them set up and ready to do the infinity plays. And uh, there are actually times where I ran out of Cosmo Monsters with a tin can to send, so. And uh, I know you're shocked, but actually that's all the ships. <laughs> that is all the ships. Wait, I'm confused. I thought there was another. Nope, nope. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> no for running, anybody got time for that. No Dark Eclipse, no, not doing, nobody got time for that. Like, these are shit. Yeah. Yep, yep, Martha counts, hello. One dark, one dark Lady, um, her and Wiener convinced me to put her back in, because I was going to not play her, but then I was like, he's like, wait, you're playing Cosmo again, just I'm getting that center and then revive her, and then negate, and God, she put in so much work, you know. It, the stun hurts too hard, you know. And then you have Dark Star in the graveyard ready to, you know, jump out the bushes and stab someone as well, and plus the back row, like, it, sometimes it was just too much for people to handle and you know it was pretty good so she put in work she put in work i only one because I, I dead drew her even when she was at one anyway so uh i ran two farm girls uh i wanted a nice pilot to tag out too and with all my back row to one up you and make sure you have no monster that could just summon that farm girl and get it and get my search and do all the plays uh it was pretty often that when i sighted i sighted out one of her especially with emergency teleport at one so if i'd probably make a change i'd probably just put her down to one because I don't really need to, you know, at times, especially if we're just teleport to, uh, to one, so. And then, of course, we run three tin can. Tin can is the best. Uh, there's not too much to send in here. Like, it's pretty much just summon tin can, send dark lady, send slip, send dark destroyer. I don't care which one I get. They're all ready to go, you know. So, and then after that, you just revive them out of the graveyard and do your plays accordingly. Uh, there's actually often times where I'll end up having, like, one of the three in my hand, or one of them will get sent with, like, Foolish. So, I end up revealing, like, Cosmo Town is one of them. Because, in this deck, Cosmo Town is nice to have, but it's not necessary. And then they'll give me, and I'll get the Cosmo Town in my hand. Which is sometimes it's nice, but then sometimes it's bad, because then I don't really have anything for Tin Can to tag out into. Which is okay, because as long as I got the back row right back of Tin Can, he'll be okay. And literally, that is all the Cosmo Monsters. There is only nine Cosmo Monsters in my Cosmo deck. <laughs> and then, of course, MVP. wouldn't be Cosmo again without Ar Armageddon, the return of Armageddon Knight. Uh, he put in work. He put in work. When I didn't have the Tin Can, he was a saving grace. It was just like, summon Armageddon Knight, send the Dark Destroyer, set some revival. Good. Send uh, summon Armageddon Knight, send Quarantine, revive the Quarantine, stun Blue Eyes. Like, it, was, it was really good. So uh, I don't think it, I mean, it's, it was crazy just like last time. But uh, still, still good plays. All right, and like I said it's 2.0. This is uh, demise, so of course we have broken ass card demise. So broken, like, like yeah, because of the way I'm playing, I get to draw three cards. That's totally fair. No, it's, this card is broken. Konami should have at least hit it. Maybe it's limited to one to limit. <coughs> nope. So uh, I went with it. I plussed a lot of my opponent. I stunned them. Some people got salty. Sometimes it was just bad, but that's just my luck. But yeah, card's super good. Two duality. Um, it was okay, like, uh, Duality is great, of course, and comboed with, uh, card is great, it's just, I don't like showing my opponent what I'm getting, you know, like, it kind of ruins the surprise factor, especially of one of my back row cards, like, unless I go, like, opening hand, Duality, and grab a card demise, it's like, okay, Duality, grab, like, a strike, okay, now you know there's a strike back there, so, uh, I generally, when I was siding, I ended up taking it down to one, so, I'm not sure about that. I wish there was, like, more dark monsters in here so I could play a lair, but there's, like, five, four. Yeah, there's, like, four dark monsters, so I can't play a lair with that. All right, probably going to get crucified for this, but two Cosmo Town, not three, because 
playtesting, <coughs> this is the worst card to draw. Like, if I already have a Cosmo Town and I draw a Cosmo Town, that's a dead draw. And I don't want it. Like, especially in this deck, it's, if it's convenient to have, it's nice, but it's not necessary. Because, really, what am I floating with? What am I grabbing back out of my banish zone? Like, the pilots, I guess, they, they tag out sometimes. But it's not like I'm, you know, Dark Destroying and floating down. You know, Dark Destroyer dies, he goes back to the graveyard. If I'm not in the graveyard. So, Cosmo Town is really just for convenience. So, unless I have, like, a pilot ready and a Cosmo Town already set, I'm probably not going to banish Dark Destroyer. He's just going to sit in the graveyard. So, uh, it's convenient to have. And, as I said, the Cosmo Town, there's only nine of them. So, the whole shuffle back thing is uh, important, but not too important to run, like, three of these and clog my hand. Because I can't shuffle back Cosmo Town with Cosmo Town. It's not Despots. So... And we run the one Foolish, the one Rota, and the one Emergency Teleport. So, the Foolish was nice because, you know, I can send without even normal summoning, which can get a lot of things sent, and I can even send, like, Slip Rider, Rota, because there's two Armageddon Knights. I still think that ratio is fine to two Armageddon Knights, one Rota. Emergency Teleport, it was not that great. <laughs> it was not. Like, sometimes, uh, most of the time I would open up with it, which is great, but then I'd be like, okay, I'd rather just, you know, take it slow and, you know, one up instead of just going off with the emergency teleport. So, there's actually times I just side off the emergency teleport because I don't really need to special summon that uh, much, so. And that is all the spells, so that is ten spells, and uh, now let's get to the bulk of the deck, which is uh, traps. We have nineteen traps, so. Vanity's warning, best trap card. Oh my god, like, especially since Monarchs are kind of out now, then it's just popping up. It just wins so hard against Bloods. Just flip it up and they're just like, oh, okay. So, uh, so good, so good. And of course, warning, it's warning, you know. It's the cheap song that everybody can get their hands on. I feel so happy about this because I actually have a playset of Solemn Strikes. Uh, I ordered them in the mail, they came and uh, I didn't see them as often as I was hoping, you know. There was one game where I saw them, all three of them, and I lost because uh, I couldn't get out of the situation he had of any team. I couldn't get out of it, and by the time, it kept on poking, by the time I got out of it, pay all my strikes and all that, uh, and busted my dark shirt, I had like 200 life points left, so I, I do it. And I still had like another set strike and a chaos trap pull at 200, so that was bad, so. But, of course, strike is broken, so it should probably be like semi-limit or limited next list. Alright, two Chaos Trap Poles. This was a last minute decision. Thought we were going to be facing a lot of BA and Blue Eyes. I didn't face a single BA. Not one. Not one PK Fire. Uh, I faced a whole bunch of different things. Uh, but when I did face decks that it wasn't useful against, I didn't see it. But when it was useful against something, I did see it. But I think I've played it maybe like once or twice the entire day. And generally cited it out. Of course, three Cosmojo. I don't care if I'm not floating down. Uh, just the whole not targeting, banishing, uh, get rid of your shit, it's just so good, you know. Even with I only have one Dark Star and two Slip Riders, this card was so good. And sometimes, I would even hit my Tin Can. I would actually just summon my Tin Can, hit it with the Cosmojo, stop, get rid of one of your plays, and then just provide Dark Daddy. And that uh, plays, like, that vanity stream that locked me out. Triple Call of the Haunted and Triple Oasis. I know the Demise deck generally only plays... Uh, two, but with the extra sending of Armageddon Knight, I was like, well, I can just play more Revival, you know? Revive that Dark Daddy, pop, pop, pop. Uh, the Oasis was kind of, eh, because I was summoning Dr. Star in defense mode, and he only has 18 booty, so then he would just get ran over. But, uh, it was still good. It was still good. One duel where Oasis clogged the hell out of me, but I'll go more into detail about that in Daily Duels. And Triple Drowning. Uh, I didn't blow out anybody. <laughs> right, like, I was gonna blow out someone, but they top decked him Twister and popped it, and I was just like, God damn it, and then, uh, against the Blue Eyes match, he, he popped it with, uh, with Spirit, so, uh, but it was nice to have, you know, sometimes I would open up just straight ass, I would open up with no monsters, and they like, oh, I can go in, and then you get hit with the Drowning, but that's the intention, it's just, I, I didn't get it off, but it's still a good card. And that is uh, the main deck, so, uh, side deck or extra deck? Extra deck, with extra deck. So, of course, uh, the only two cards that I really went into, and, uh... It the ones, was, like, matter. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, Infinity, the Nova. Uh, I actually had one opportunity, because someone actually got rid of it. So it was a Cyber and Dragon. I uh, couldn't find a Barroid, so I went with that. Uh, I summoned Nova. I was playing against Trains. He uh, detached the Dare Crane, popped the Nova, and I, was like, and I summoned the Cyber uh, and Dragon. He's like, oh my god, you play it, and then I ran over his Dora, so, and I won that game, so it was nice. Uh, then all the cards that I played but never went into, never went into Pleiades, never went into 
Charger, Neverwind Volca, Neverwind Durandal, Neverwind Zemayo, even though that play is actually pretty cute because I can go summon slip, pop, summon slip, pop, go into Zemayo, detach, pop too, but I didn't r really run into too many stun decks that stunned me completely, I didn't set a whole bunch of set there, I couldn't play. Uh, because we run like Armageddon Knights and stuff like that, I was like, if there's any four playups I'm going to is Utopia, Utopia Lightning, get off it, over that Chaos Max. I, I'm thinking that Utopia, Utopia Lightning is starting to pass up even, uh, uh, even Castell with the, with the, with the go-to. Uh, I think that the water is starting to shifting. Maybe, maybe still Dweller, but yeah, definitely Utopia, Utopia Lightning. Uh, then we got the Dante, the Greg Sword, the Utopia Creature Committed, so all that's Cherries and never fought PK, so, <laughs> awesome. Uh, of course, I didn't know that. And then for more cherry plays, we have the spirit, which uh, I was I faced one blue eyes. I was thinking about doing it, but it really wasn't the spirit that was fucking with me. It was just that uh, he kept summoning three thousand beaters so easily when you know I'm struggling to get out my dark destroyer in the game, and that, that that's a hard matchup now since dark destroyer that one. And then I thought that I was going to go against dark synchro, so I decided in, in Omega for the cherries as well. Uh, you also need to make sure that you make room if you still can play cherries for ABCs coming up. So. Well, that is the extra deck, so moving on to the side deck. Like I said, running cherries, triple cherries. I didn't face any PK. I sided him once. I faced a Galaxy Eyes guy, and he pretty much tried to drop Infinity on me every turn, first turn. So I just sided in cherries because he went first in uh, game three. So I put the cherries in, and he tried to go into the Infinity. I cherry stick. Because I mean, I run Infinity too, so it's like, nah, get that out of here. not Infinity me. So that was the only time that cherries was actually useful. Uh, then we run two quarantines. Uh, it's so good. It's so good. Like, if you're not playing like a light deck, maybe even if you are playing light deck, this card might actually be one of the best side cards this format. Because, of course, you can lock out blue eyes, but you can also lock out Herald. And that deck is really difficult to side against. Like, really difficult. Like, there's, there's not all too much you can really do, especially since you can't really stop a ritual summons. Like, almost, it's not an inherent summon, so you can't really stop it with a strike, can't stop it with a chaos trap hole. So, and Herald can just keep negating, 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 negating. Like, it's really difficult. So, if you can just bust this out against both, it's really great. And they have a hard time. The only problem is that he's only 17, so they can just summon Stick and run you over. So. If that's a struggle cell. If you're playing like a blue eyes, then I'd, I'd probably recommend the clock and arrow over it. As long as you have a dragon reveal, but this is good too. I can go, I'm gonna get a knight, send the quarantine, revive the quarantine, and then lock you out of light monster, so that was nice. I run one Regeki and two Dark Hole because I was afraid of getting locked out of playing Yu Gi Oh! Uh, you know, Vanity Fiend, Maddy Fiend. I thought maybe I'd face some monarchs, and I did. I faced one monarch, and he actually locked me out game one, so rip on that. Uh, but I said he's in, and. I really didn't say. I also decided to get uh, in against Train so I could bait and get the Dora to do its effect and then chain something else to it. Uh, but yeah, it, it was fairly decent. It's fairly decent. Triple Twin Twister. Uh, I said this a lot. Like for me playing a, a Demise deck, I was the one that was getting hit with the back row more often than not, so I ended up siding in uh, the Twin Twisters popping their back row and, and then going off. So uh, despite being a Demise deck, I was still getting aggressive with the Cosmos. A two anti-spell, but I didn't face any pendulums. Uh, I sided in against Blue Eyes. I didn't see it. I sided in against Monarchs, and he top deck Twin Twisted it immediately, so that was rip, but yeah, only two. Uh, I'm not sure if I would run three. I don't know, but I only had two to borrow, so. <laughs> and then my cute little tech, the two time space trap holes, more life point pay. I know so much for a deck that's not running Forerunner, but I was really afraid of Chaos Max. Like, I already have a hard enough time against Blue Eyes. Something 3,000 beaters. Last time you do summon a 4,000 beater, they can't be targeted, destroyed by card effects. I mean, yeah, I still have the Drownings and the Cosmodo, but I want to make sure as soon as that monster has to fail, I can just be like, nope, go back. So, uh, besides to uh, main deck the Chaos Trap Holes and then uh, side deck these. So, these were actually Chaos Trap Holes in the side. And uh, that is pretty much the deck profile. So, I did not face PK Fire at all. In all my eight rounds, I faced different decks. So, round one, I faced. Magic Specters, I won 2-0. Round 2, I faced Herald, I won 2-1. Round 3, I faced Blue Eyes, I lost 1-2. Round 4, I faced Galaxy Eyes deck, and I lost 1-2. Round 5, I faced Water, or Mermel Lantians, or whatever, Lantian Mermel, and I won 2-0. Round 6, I faced Black Wings, and I won 2-0. Round 7, I faced Monarchs, and I lost 0-2. And then round 8, I faced 
trains, and I lost one too, so four and four. All right, so that's the deck profile. Like I said, I'll go more in detail about each round in Daily Duels. So there you go. There's the updated version of uh, Cosmogeddon. Not bad. The deck worked mostly fine. It's just my luck is terrible. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for support, and I'll see you guys next time.